My name is Catherine Weiss. I am an artist and community arts organizer uh, with South Downtown, and I was born and raised in Lincoln. When I was growing up, my mom had like this watercolor Boy Scout handbook that um, showed all these different rocks and I was really excited about it. So for a while I wanted to be like an archeologist and dig up beautiful rocks, but I could never find any in my backyard. So I just started drawing in the like Boy Scout handbook, all the rocks and stuff. So I think I've always been really attracted to um, images and beauty. And so yeah, I've known since I was like a little kid, I wanted to make art. So I've been painting since I was in sixth grade and I love painting and I was doing acrylic painting, but I didn't know anything about oil paint when I was in high school and like before that. So I was always like using a slow dry medium the last few years of high school. And then in uh, college, I learned about oil painting and it completely changed my life because I was like, oh man, this is what I've been trying to achieve for the past four years. So yeah, I emphasized in printmaking when I was in college, but I've always been painting and I love painting. So I graduated from UNL in 2018, and uh, before that I was running an art space with some friends called Parallel Visions that was like for artists of color, by artists of color, and it was really satisfying. I learned a lot about curating and like storytelling and like working with other people. So like through that experience, I started working at South of Downtown um, Community Development Organization because it's like this whole weird kind of long story. Um, but essentially with the money we fundraised to keep Parallel Visions going, we ended up running a program at Park Middle School, which is how I met my current employer. Man, I actually feel really lucky because I've had a ton of mentors and a ton of support. Like both of my parents have been very supportive of my art and both of my parents have like parents who made art too. So they kind of always understood that. And then when I was in high school, I had like a lot of really supportive art teachers but one person who had like a huge impact on my artistic practice that I think about a lot now as an adult is uh, Ben Jones, who was a, like an arts activist and um, he's African American and was doing a lot of critical thinking about the school system. So he came into my high school and was teaching a street art class. And so he taught me stuff about street art. I was already doing graffiti, honestly. So <laughs> um, like a little bit. And so he taught like more about like the history of street art and then I would hang out with him in his studio and like paint and learn a lot of stuff. So he was really cool and he like let me borrow his laptop so I could apply for college. Um, and I joined Upward Bound and so I applied for a bunch of different schools and I definitely wouldn't have been able to go to college without like financial support and scholarships and stuff. So I feel really lucky for having like art teachers and programs that helped me be successful. So I work for South of Downtown Community Development Organization, and it's based in the Near South and Everett neighborhoods in two census tracts, the 20.01 and 20.02 census tracts, which are between A and H Street and like 10th and 17th Street, something like that. And there's 5,500 people that live here, like 94% rental and like high poverty, but also a lot of diversity, a lot of creative people, a lot of culture, and a lot of amazing businesses. So what we're trying to do is just improve the quality of life for people that live here, improve opportunities uh, for businesses and entrepreneurs. So I've been organizing mural projects and workshops and looking at how public art can make uh, neighborhoods more walkable. It can improve the perception of safety. It can be a point of neighborhood pride and neighborhood dignity. Um, and it can bring people together to have conversations about their shared values. So that's what I'm doing through South of Downtown as an arts organizer and oh, I love it so much. <laughs> yeah, if I wasn't like always hungry to make art all the time, I would happily do this for like the rest of my life pretty much. Um, yeah, and my team is really amazing. We're doing a lot of like housing advocacy, civic engagement work, like using the sidewalks um, to put signs out about voting and uh, census and stuff like that. Uh, our organizer, Christy Yang, started like the civic sidewalk series where they're using like temporary spray chalk around the neighborhood and now around the city to like inform people about um, like voter registration and voting dates and stuff. There's the pandemic in 2020 and then there was a bunch of violence towards uh, like black people. And so both of those things happening simultaneously had um, 
made me start thinking about public space and putting art outside because obviously we can't can't go in galleries as much or it's not like a safe thing to do during the pandemic. Um, now that things are getting better, I'm hoping that we'll be able to like go to First Fridays again, but that wasn't something I was able to do. And so I was thinking about how can we put art in the public space so that it's actually confronting people and it's not just kind of going into this gallery vortex where only other artistic people will see the work. Because at a certain point, it's like the work I was making, I wanted to confront people who didn't already agree with me about the humanity and the dignity of black people. Like that was something I was thinking about, um, particularly last summer. So I was invited to do like a wood cut, um, like outdoor wheat paste installation with Lux Center for the Arts and Constellation Studios. And so them inviting me to do that just forced me to have like all this public art outside. And I was like, man, this is really cool. I wanna keep doing this. So I was, um, after Ahmad Arbery was um, shot like in his neighborhood going for a run last year, I like couldn't stop thinking about it. And I wanted to make an image outside so that people were confronted with like the reality of that. Um, so I made a like a big outdoor eight foot by four foot mural on like a boarded up window at Sandy's. So I think the pandemic has definitely made me think about like public space more. And that's something I'm still really interested in. Um, yeah, woodcuts, especially like printmaking is just made to be proliferated. So like might as well like have people see it who maybe don't care about the things you care about right now, but maybe that art can impact them or help them to think about or process something they may not otherwise have. When it comes to like street signs in this public space, I do think the city has a long way to go to like make things as simple as yard storming easier. Like there's a lot, a lot of red tape on a lot of public art, like light poles, electric poles. There's all these different city entities that, that you would have to ask to like knit around a stop sign. Do you know what I mean? It's heinous. During the pandemic, I worked with my friend and super amazing artist, David Manzanares, to organize a mural at 11th and G Street on Esquina de los Espanos, which is formerly Klein's Corner. So it went from being like this historic German from Russia corner to now being like this really amazing like series of businesses that are primarily like Mexican-American. So after like a long time of asking the landlords and like flyering, be like, hey, can we paint your building? And we'd love to have like a Latinx artist like come and paint this and you wouldn't have to worry about anything. We finally got permission. And then a couple months later, like David came up to us and was like, I really want to make a mural on that building. And I was like, who'd have thought? So um, we had planned it for this year and it was executed last year with like a community fundraiser and um, he depicted like the loved ones of people on the block who had passed away. And it was honestly kind of a heart-wrenching process because his dad passed away during the middle of making the mural. And so he ended up including like 12 figures because his assistants, like grandmother passed away. And there's just a lot of loss, but having like this art piece depicting these people and then surrounded by like these butterflies and like composition flowers and all of this, um, just like beautiful Mexican heritage. It made it so it was like a really healing, cathartic piece. And it's just like giant, it's like two stories. And he received so many messages, like seeing these butterflies like made my day and I was having a horrible day. Or um, one of the women who works at Salon Belesa, which is like right next to the mural, her, I believe it was her grandfather had come to like Texas and was trying to get to her in Nebraska, but he passed away. And so like seeing him there just like made her weep and she was like, I feel like he's finally with me after all this time. So it's like those sorts of stories of like, oh yeah, this is why we're doing it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Even thinking about uh, Ben Jones, like he was doing, like I said, a lot of critical thinking about the school system and thinking about the fact he wasn't given the support he needed but he showed up in the school to be that support for other students. So I think it's people like Ben that are making Lincoln a better place where it's like, especially as an artist of color, it's like you can see a gap in the community and think, I'm gonna get the fuck out of here, <laughs> to be honest. Or you can say like, maybe I can fill that gap. Maybe I can like be a resource for other people that need this thing. So I see a lot of people that are doing that and like filling gaps and trying to be a resource for other people. Um, yeah, I see a lot more like representation than I did when I was growing up in the art scene. Of course, maybe I wasn't aware of everything, but yeah, I definitely think there is support and growing support here for artists and for creative people. 
Um, I still think we have a lot of work to do to like have significant resources, but we're definitely moving in a positive direction. I have two shows in 2022. One is at Kisho Fine Art, which is on like 14th and O, and that's where I'll be displaying like a huge body of work that I've been planning on for like more like two years or something, um, depicting like African American people here in Nebraska and the different like identities that exist here, like black people who are adopted by white people and multiracial black people and like these sort of in-between experiences. Um, and then in February 2022, I have a solo show at Lux Center for the Arts and I think like the East Gallery, it's a smaller gallery. And I'm showing work um, about Charles Chestnut, who was like an early African-American writer who spent like half of his career passing as white. So I'm working with uh, the university on like an archive of his work. So I'll be showing the pieces that I make for that.